Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out my budget media server. So let's get started. Now for the past couple of weeks, I actually been working on this project where we're building the Proxmox server, Jellyfin, some R services and a few other things all incorporated into this one machine. Now this is called the Zima Blade. Now this is a $65 single board computer that you can purchase right now. It is by far the most budget computer you could use to build something like this. Granted, you do still need to purchase RAM. So it comes out to like an extra $20. So it's $85 instead of 65 because of the RAM. But all in all, it's still much cheaper than a lot of alternatives just because of this exposed PCIe. Now the Zima Blade itself is not a powerhouse. It's definitely able to do a lot of stuff, but it's definitely not the fastest you can get out there right now compared to like other mini boards that I see like N100s or N95s. Now what the Zima Blade has is an Intel Celeron J34 455. It's a base clock of 1.5 gigahertz and 2.3 gigahertz boost speed, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, um, that's what my current configuration is, and an Intel HD 500 at 750 megahertz and it can decode H.265. Now this particular board also has 32 gigabytes of EMMC and I was able to actually get about six direct streams and two transcodings with this device. Now, I personally consider this a perfect starter board for your home lab because you will quickly realize where the limitations are and what you want to do. Now, what I do like about this, like I said earlier, is the exposed PCIe. So in my configuration, I have two hard drives here, which is two two terabyte, three and a half inch drives with the NVMe board on the PCIe adapter. Now, if I was to change the configuration a little bit, I could actually use two SSDs in place of the spindle drives and add a graphic card like this to be able to transcode more videos. But it all depends on your configuration and what you want. If you find this to be perfect for your home lab where two transcodes and a few direct streams is perfectly fine, then you might want to keep this configuration or actually change out this PCIe for a faster network adapter. All of which you can do with this board to test around and play around with what you really want until you actually go and buy that bigger server or bigger desktop that you need. And budget wise for $65 for the board, it's really not bad. Now, if you want to check out another product, they also have the Zima board, which is slightly stronger a CPU and it runs DDR4 RAM instead of DDR3 on this one, but it still retains the exposed PCIe so you can do the same thing. Now all in all with this configuration that I have, as far as power usage, it only takes about 10 watts idle. Actually a little bit lower than that. I see like 9.5 to 10 watts on idle itself. And when I'm finally doing transcode and putting it under stress, it jumps up to around like 17 to 18 watts, which is amazing running two hard drives as well. Now here I have a graph of the Buddha process and then it idles a little bit and then it starts up all the containers and then it idles back down a little bit and then it does its process. The peak you would ever see on this was probably be 18 or 19 when it first boots up. And then throughout the remainder, it kind of just stays around 10 to 15 as it's booting up and running all its processes. Now I have another graph over here is just idle itself and you can see how it just stays around nine to 10 watts. Now here's the third graph where I'm stress testing this and I'm running transcodes as well as some other stuff and you can see it jumps up to around 18 watts. So all in all, this this is a very, very power efficient machine if you're gonna build a small little home lab for yourself. Now, as far as what I got in here, again, I'll leave a playlist of all the stuff we've been doing on this machine, but we do have Proxmox uh, installed. Uh, we also have a couple of containers in here. One, which is Jellyfin to run all our media. We have a NAS server in here. We have our own little built-in router to run a VPN to run other services inside there. So everything's safe and protected. And all in all, with all those services running, um, on fresh boot, it's about 2.5 gigs to 2.7 gigs of RAM, which leaves me a lot of headroom on an eight gig setup to add more applications if I needed to. Now, this whole thing is all passively cooled, so it's extremely quiet. You could stick it next to your TV or something. You won't even hear this thing run except for the hard drives, depending on the versions that you get. If you get SSD, it's gonna be ultimately quiet. But if you have some spindles, you might hear the clicking noise. Either way, it's a really good first setup if you ever decide to jump into home lab. Now, my final thoughts about this, when I first started this project, I didn't actually expect it to be able to do as much as I wanted to. I honestly thought I had to change NVMe to a uh, graphic card so I could do more transcodes, but being able to pass the onboard graphic card over to the container and use that as a transcoding, that worked out perfectly. And there was a lot of times where I was pulling my hair out because this thing is not as fast as I'm used to. I, I'm used to running i9s or i7s as servers. And when I run those as a test machine before I do videos on this, this takes forever to process certain things. 
It does get the job done once everything is installed, but it is by far much slower than what I want it to be. Now, I don't plan on keeping this current configuration like this because I actually have the same exact setup on another machine. So my plans is actually to do another video series using the same machine, but for just more for like backups, utility, uh, home assistant, stuff like that. And this could definitely be able to do all that. What I would normally put on my other servers just to serve the network. So if you have any thoughts about the next video series, let me know down in the comments below on what you want to see. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below or join my Discord. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.